being out of this reading slump is incredible. All right, Shirley Jackson. I see you. Also, look at all the colors. She's the freaking worst. I guess if you think about it, the internet can be scary. Hey guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel, and it is Spookathon time. So for those of you who have watched me try to do a readathon before, and by try, I mean start strong on the first day, and then basically not pick up a book for the rest of the readathon, you might be wondering, um, girl, have you not learned? But here's the thing. I have learned. I have a solution. And I'm going to be testing out this solution during Spookathon. You see, my TBR is small. Actually doable for me. <laughs> and I'm also trying out this new thing where I read every night before bed. So <laughs> we're gonna see how it goes. Let's jump into it. I got my spooky earrings on and everything. And Frankie chilling in the back. <laughs> so first up, there are five challenges for Spookathon and I'm only reading two books. That's right. Two books should satisfy all of these challenges. Again, that TBR. Keeping it real small and hopefully that means I can succeed. My first book, The Haunting of Hill House, satisfies challenge three, read a book with a spooky setting. I'm gonna zoom in on this here. I don't know if you can see that. It's an actual haunted house, okay? <laughs> It also satisfies challenge four, read a book with a spooky word in the title. Haunting is a spooky word. That's just a fact. And also challenge two, which is read a book with red on the cover. Now the house is more of like an orangey red. So, you know, it's debatable, but the copy I have actually has a Netflix sticker on it. And there is no disputing that the Netflix logo is red. So you know what, I'm just running with it. But for the other two challenges, number one, read a thriller and number five, read something outside of my comfort zone. I. I'm gonna have to try a little bit harder to find a book. Partially because I guess, if I'm gonna be honest, I, oh, poor Frankie, oh no. <laughs> I am not 100% positive what distinguishes a thriller from a mystery from a horror novel. I feel like the lines between those often blur. For instance, I am a mystery fan that I think a lot of the mysteries I read have a lot of thrilling aspects to it, but are they thrillers? And also like, I think a lot of horror novels could by others be classified as thrillers, but not all thrillers are horror novels. There's a lot of like all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares things kind of going on here. So what is our reader to do? Well, I turned to Goodreads. And it also didn't help me that much, gonna be honest. Okay, if I start by searching Goodreads for The Haunting of Hill House, I can see kind of what it says, what it is. Eh. Okay, horror, classic fiction, goth, mystery, fantasy. It's not even a thriller. <laughs> okay, how do I? I'm just gonna search for a thriller. There we go. And then top thrillers. I don't know that I have read any of these. What? I didn't realize that was a thriller. And then I attempted to just straight up Google it. But that also did not help me much either. <laughs> oh no, is suspense a thing? I'm seeing a lot of squares and rectangles here. So I have decided now to turn to YouTube and search up what the best thriller novels are. And I'm gonna watch a video from Naya Reads and Smiles. Hey everybody, it's Naya. As well as Books and Lala. Hi friends, it's Lala. And then I'm just going to see what kind of jumps out at me from their suggestions and also of those, what my library actually has in stock available and that will achieve the other two objectives because reading a thriller is slightly out of my comfort zone if the fact that I don't actually know entirely what a thriller is wasn't already a clue. <sighs> All right, let's get to watching. Revenge and a group of people who were bad. It's so good and we're following multiple characters. I think it was- Okay, I think I now have a pretty solid list of options to go from. There was actually a book, The Girl in 6E, that both Naya and Lala mentioned in their videos. So really the question's gonna be if my library has it, but again, lots of options. My library has to have at least one of these available. <laughs> so I've made a lot of searches um, to varying degrees of success. I do appreciate though that the kind worth killing pulled up such wonderful things as 12 Days of Christmas, a novel, and the BFG, <laughs> but out of my entire list of options, I did manage to put on reserve one of the ones I really wanted, The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. I haven't actually read any Ruth Ware before, so I'm excited. 
I have an option and my library is now closed because it is the Saturday before Spookathon and they will not be open on Sunday. So to kick off Spookathon, I will get to go and pick up my book from the library. Yay! I'm realizing of all the mugs I have, I'm missing one that is about books and reading. So at some point I need to fix that. But for now, we're gonna go with this one. It's time. Ooh, okay. So this book's gonna be interesting because I don't normally, why does this feel like I'm falling sideways? I don't normally mark up my books, but I do when I'm doing a cooking with classics. And I was thinking how perfect this one would be for it in the interim while I am still reading The Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> Immediate thoughts, basically, this freaking book Ooh, has just this iconic opening paragraph. It's incredible, but also it has like a bunch of introduction that I accidentally read about the characters in. Like I skipped around at the back end. I was watching a video by Spinster's Library. I didn't watch all of it, but her whole point was how we are okay spoiling classic novels, like on the backs of them and stuff. And then in the forward, anyway, so I skipped it. <laughs> but the part I love is that not only are we so quickly introduced to what the haunted of Hill House is basically gonna be about. It is very um, like, and then there were none E where letters are sent out, which I also love so much. I have loved Clue all my life, the, both the movie and the board game, but the movie of the sending them out. And I know it stole that kind of from, and then there were none. So anyways, all aspects of bringing people into a location, not knowing a lot about the people. Ooh, I'm just so ready. <laughs> We're introduced to Dr. John Montague on the first page. And at one point as they're talking about him, the sentence goes, he had been looking for an honestly haunted house all his life and same. <laughs> I am just so curious about all things supernatural and spooky, but okay, didn't get very far. Only on chapter two now. Oh, it's not even chapter two. This is chapter one. And within chapter one, we're within the second scene of chapter one. It's an interesting way to set it up because as I'm like going through this, I notice we have that later where we have a big chapter six that's like quite a ways through and then a little two here. So I know that that was something that used to be done a little bit more. I'm gonna bring up and then there were none again. Cause I think that's how Agatha Christie's book was like sort of, set up also, but I am so excited. The other thing to note is that it is now, if my photo focus, 8.35. And let's see, I don't think my library opens until nine. Where's my library on my map? Yes, it opens at nine. So I will pick up my other book in just a little bit, but in the meantime, more reading. Let's do it. So it's always one of those things when I'm reading a creepy sort of book, we haven't even gotten to the freaking house yet. And I'm over here like, it's gonna be creepy. It's gonna be so creepy. So then when I'm reading things that are just giving the illusion of something, like clearly the author knows what she's doing because she's just sprinkling in options that I'm here thinking, is this gonna come back? Is this part that theoretically isn't related, is it related to Hill House? Uh, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Anyways, it's very good so far. I've already marked up a couple things. How I do the cooking with classics is that I just mark up a lot of things and then try and group them together once I'm done with the book. And I actually do think I will go to the forward and read it once I'm done. So, oh, sorry, the introduction, excuse me, not the forward. But it is now almost 9 a.m. and I can go to the library, yay! Coffee done. The one thing that you didn't know at the beginning that you know at the end, and you have to take us on that journey to learn that. For those wondering, this is the podcast I was listening to, but also, just turn this off for a second. Guess what your girl forgot? Apparently today's Columbus Day. Do you know who still takes Columbus Day off? <laughs> you know, schools, also libraries. Libraries take Columbus Day off. So, so it's not gonna be a total loss. Will it be a total loss? I'll pick up my book tomorrow. 
<laughs> I can't believe. Uh, this is the part of being an adult and then just working from home that everything I forget. <laughs> oh, whoops, plus side. Haunting of Hill House. Really good. We'll see how far I can get in that day, I guess, before I have the distraction of another book. Although, when I get home, I'll have to show you the multitude of books I have checked out from the library that are not spookathon themed that I'm also trying to get through. So maybe today's just gonna be finish the books day. Also, to make up for how sad I am at this, I think I might go get a pumpkin spice cold brew from Starbucks. I'm making up for my own mistake. <laughs> Back on the road, I guess. Also, you can see my reflection. Hello. I got pumpkin drink and a pumpkin scone. Also, one of the people working there told me that she really liked my bag. So you know what? It's fine I didn't get the book today. <laughs> I'm reading The Haunting of Hill House, I want you to say about the spookification okay. that you were talking about. Yeah, so at least to my knowledge, the first time that movie was made, it was called The Haunting. It would have been like a late 50s, early 1960s movie. Yeah. And it terrified her, as I said earlier. Spookified. It spookified a whole damn generation. Yeah. It was clearly the scariest thing that had come out on film. Enough so that the best friend I had at the time told me it just scared the bejeebers out of him and I did not have the courage to, to wa watch it. Wow! So to this day, I have not <gasps> seen that movie. Oh shit, we're gonna have to watch it. <laughs> Alright, so I did not get nearly as much reading as I thought I was going to today. I feel like this is what happens every readathon is that I just... Usually the first day is stronger, honestly. Anyways, I think I'll be able to make up time. I only got through the first chapter of The Haunting of Hill House. And actually, I'm gonna start off with a different book tonight. I'm going to double check that I have any interest in this book, Digital Minimalism. I guess if you think about it, the internet can be scary, so... It can fit. <laughs> I just want to see since now I'm going to have to go to the library tomorrow. I'll just double check that I don't want to return this one. I actually got, I think I saw this as a recommendation on like an article I was reading. So I'll just double check real quick. It shouldn't take too many pages for me to be like yay or nay. So we're gonna do that first. Minimalism is the art of knowing how much is just enough. Digital minimalism applies this idea to our personal technology. It's the key to living a focused life in an increasingly noisy world. Okay. This also has an introduction, but compared to fiction books, I do almost always read the introductions on nonfiction. Okay, I think I'll keep it for a bit longer. <laughs> now it's time for me to hop into bed and keep reading The Haunting of Hill House. I feel like it's clear I don't read much horror because for some reason I was expecting for the characters not to know that Hill House is haunted. I mean like they know it's haunted but like the immediacy with which are one of the first characters that's there is just feeling like it's awful and evil and there was something very wrong with it and there's even a part where she goes I think I'm going to cry she thought like a child sobbing and wailing I don't like it here but I guess the whole premise is that they kind of know it's haunted ahead of time oh man the way it's described in the start of chapter two. Oh no oh no it has this entire opening paragraph detailing and very like specific description about the evilness of this house and then says exorcism cannot alter the continents of a house. Hill House would stay as it was until it was destroyed and it's just like oh no no no. This is just gonna be fascinating to see what I think because I'm reading this before bed. This might have been a bad idea. Honestly maybe all of it's a bad idea. I don't know. <laughs> but I am done reading for the night so good night. All right it is time for take two. I'm gonna freaking get this book.
very on theme. You are mine. <laughs> and now you know what else is mine? Candy corn. But I am gonna take these and move them because it is Preptober and with Preptober means that your girl's been working hard to prep her story and also I have to film videos about Preptober, so. So graceful. <laughs> Test one, two, three. Just a little bit. All right, I finished it. I still have half a cappuccino left and I only had a couple of these. So we're gonna go back and read while I consume them. Let's go. This line I'm highlighting because I think it's funny says she was bored already with the book she had brought. Though that's true for Eleanor, that's usually true for me, but for a different reason, just because I'm, my mind's on other books. <laughs> oh, I feel like so far I've just been kind of like stealing moments to read, which means that it's not going by very quickly. But after this live write in with Becca, I'm about to do so I had to bring my computer back. I'm hoping that, you know, that should end around seven ish. Becca and I might talk for a little bit after that. And then hopefully I can get to reading and maybe just have that be my only goal for the evening is read. <sighs> hopefully. Hey, look, I just got the alert <laughs> for the write-in. Let's see. Look, it'll begin. Oh, look, wow, there's already 55 people. Oh my goodness, ah! I had to make a note, okay? Because look, <laughs> page 43, is this not Clue? Where my blue tab is. The interaction between all of them reads something like this. Our four main characters that we actually meet on the back of the book, or, you know, so before you pick it up, you know who's gonna be who, are now all together. And so they're trying to distinguish who is who because I guess they're nervous is what we should assume. We know only names so far. I know that it's Eleanor here who is wearing a red sweater and consequently must be Theodora who wears yellow. Dr. Montague has a beard, Theodora said, and so you must be Luke. And you are Theodora, Eleanor said, because I am Eleanor. Therefore, you are wearing the red dress. I have no beard, Luke said, so he must be Dr. Montague. And then Dr. Montague you proudly proclaims that he, yes, has a beard. Therefore, yes, he is Dr. Montague. Anyways, <laughs> I'm just sitting here and I'm like, is that not Clue? I need to freaking look up when Clue the movie was done in relation, because I already knew that and then there were none is part of the inspiration for Clue. But Shirley Jackson's The Haunting of Hell House is also a classic and I know must have taken place, there we go, 1959 before Clue. The question is, if I search, it's 3 a.m. Oh. What? I'm getting up. Okay. What inspired Clue the movie? Besides, of course, Clue the board game. I need to know. I need to know. You'll see the 10 little Indians is actually, and then there were none, another name for that. So that one was clearly based off of it. Was the haunting of Hill House not? Silly me, go back. In 1954, six strangers are invited to a dinner party at Hill House. Of course. You know, all this means for me is that besides watching The Haunting, which is a movie that my dad was really scared by, so scared he wouldn't watch it. And also the Netflix adaptation, I should just add Clue again because clearly I'd forgotten that Hill House was even what it was called. Anyways, I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've clearly solved one of today's great mysteries, I have about two more hours before I'm doing another live stream today. And besides getting a video up and working on my own stories and writing, the only thing I've done is that dad and I went to our favorite Indian buffet in San Antonio. So I just haven't been able to move from sitting, laying somewhere because I'm so full still. So I think if I can get halfway through this book, I'll be happy. I think that'll be fun. Also, there's something just so great about seeing all these little tabs. <laughs> okay, back to reading. Where was I at? There we go. I 
don't know that we've truly gotten to the very dangerous part of Hill House yet. I'm not even a third of the way through. I am tired though. And I can see a little bit out the window. Something about reading horror and being able to see out the window feels a little creepy, I'll admit. I think that means it is time to get into my glasses and go to sleep. Good night. All right, so new philosophy. Since, since I'm not making as much progress as I'd hoped in this book as quickly, because I'm having to read it in like random stolen chunks, it feels like all, I just knocked my own glasses off my face. <laughs> my only goals for today are to finish my reread in Chicago video. And you can see I have a lot to go. And read. Those are the only two main objectives I have today. I do need to run to the post office, but like everything else is little things. So I'm thinking each day that I manage to edit on here means I will get to stop and read for 45 minutes. I feel like that's a chunk, but it's a bigger chunk than I have been reading in. So I think I can get this book done today. I know I've said that or something similar each day, but that's the plan. And also at some point I want to make some cookies, some Halloween cookies. So we'll see where that'll go in the day. Maybe for a reward to stop like looking at a screen or a book, a book. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this day done. <laughs> Alrighty, the first day is finished. And that first day was only five minutes and 18 seconds. It's really the rest of the days like at that writer's museum <laughs> that I just took so much footage so I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with that. But yeah, guess who gets to read now? I'm excited, 45 minutes. I think I'm actually gonna set a timer so I can just get shit done today. 45 minutes and start. Oh, I should move to somewhere more comfy, okay. Ah, hey Duke, you wanna go read with me outside? Yeah, let's do it. Good job, buddy. All right, before putting music in, I have finished day two at 11.17. Slow progress, but it's happening. The plus side is it basically, I should have all of the clips in there already so it can only keep getting shorter. But now it is time for another 45 minutes of reading. Woo! I interrupt this writing and reading montage to bring you to, oh, you can't see it, the grocery store. On my list in order to make the cookies are some granulated sugar and some sticks of butter that I did not have at home. So we're gonna do that real quick. This is as good a break as any. Oh, I'm so excited. I'll try a new recipe. Ooh. Ingredients, got. Time to make some Halloween cookies, yes. All right, my timer just ended. Okay, I had to put my cookie dough that I'd made into the fridge. I've never made sugar cookie dough before. Um, so I didn't realize that was a step that needed to happen. So in the meantime, though I didn't read, I did get some work done <laughs> and a video filmed. So all in all, pretty good. I even um, dyed the little cream cheese frosting I'm gonna put on top to be orange because I have a pumpkin cookie cutter and then a ghost. He might just be plain, who knows? <laughs> this is kind of spooky lighting on accident. I'm using a recipe courtesy of one Mr. Alton Brown, so. We're gonna hope that these turn out pretty good. Or I'll take the credit for effing them up and not alt it. Next step, preheat oven to 375. So, making sure nothing's already in there. 375 and start. I'm supposed to sprinkle it with powdered sugar for some reason, I don't know. This will be fun to clean. <laughs> Look, whatever you say, Alton.
It is now 6.20. I went to bed extra early last night because my throat's bothering me. I feel a little bit better, but not really so. I think I'm just going to stay in bed for a while longer and read and get a lazier start to the day. Pull my covers back up. I am now on page 119, and there are only 182 pages in this book. And I don't know if this is because I haven't read a lot of horror or suspense or thrillers, or if it's just like part of the genre potentially, but like I don't really know the direction it's gonna go. I feel like there are all these hints and clearly as we're over halfway through the book, we are kind of getting more into the thick of it and the characters like more and more stuff is happening in the house, but I'm just sitting here and even though I'm catching the hints that at least the characters think they're catching, you know? I don't think this is actually how it's going to happen. So I feel like I'm kind of being tossed around and I don't know. Oh, it's good. It's good. Ah. <laughs> this is a quote. The library? I think it might do. Books are frequently very good carriers, you know. Materializations are often best produced in rooms where there are books. 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 I'm ready for the ghosts. I'm ready for the materializations. Now the character that said that quote is a character that's joined halfway through the book. No, more than halfway. And I'm of the opinion that either she's gonna die or something's gonna happen because she's so annoying. She's the freaking worst. And I think the writer wants us to think she's the worst so that when she dies, like, I don't, I don't know. What is the purpose of this? <laughs> well, for at least one scene. Now I know. Oh my gosh. The ending. Damn. And now it's 8.46 and it's actually light outside. I'm gonna go out on a ledge and say that that's actually the best way to end a horror novel in the middle of daylight. Oh my God, that, mm. All right, Shirley Jackson, I see you. Also look at all the colors. <laughs> breakfast of champions. Champion readers. Readers who have finished one of their spookathon books. Okay, so the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm actually, I think during the last half of the book, I kept putting tabs, but I just stopped putting notes. So I'm going to give my overall feelings as it progressed, since I am going to try and do this as a Cooking with Classics episode. But then I will move on to the next book that I will be reading, The Death of Mrs. Westaway. And it will be my first book by Ruth Ware. So that'll be kind of fun. Actually, that would go on the bottom and then because the notebook I got to make note anyways And then I did an unboxing kind of on Instagram. I didn't do a very good job But look I got the entire riser saga by Becca C. Smith I've actually read riser and I read it during my first 24-hour readathon So these are kind of like young adults spooky -y, horror -y, As you can tell by the covers <laughs> So I figure if in some off chance I managed to actually finish the Death of Mrs. Westaway, which who knows, maybe I now have a set of books for me and have more books falling. Then I will move on to those. Plan. Time for something new. One for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy, five for silver, six for gold, seven for secret, never to be told. Ooh, okay. Ooh, look at that. Share successful. I was watching My Name is Marinus. I've done a fair amount of work today, both YouTube and writing. I have not actually read anything else, but I'm going to upload this and drink my tea while watching the newest episode of The Great British Baking Show, GBBO, or GBBS in the US, I guess. I don't know. That's not as fun. Anyways, and then I think I'm going to actually get back to reading myself to sleep. It'll be a little bit later than planned to know what I gotta take it, how I can get it. Grand statements have never been my strong suit on these readathons, but because I managed to finish one book, and although this next book is bigger, it is the weekend coming up, I might be able to push through and get both books and meet all of the challenges. Okay, that's my hope. All right, let's deal with this. <laughs> oh, look at that pup. Yes. I've decided tonight to read by my phone light, which 
it's casting the eeriest of glows all around me. I just didn't feel like having to get up to turn the light off because I think it's gonna be a real quick one for me tonight. The only thing I've managed to read so far is actually just this opening journal entry. Chapter one. I think I see a typo, but I'm honestly too tired to even know if it's on purpose because it's like a handwritten note or if it's not on purpose. And you know what? I think that's as good a sign as any that it is time to go to sleep. I'm eating lunch. You know, the interesting thing about reading books that aren't usually in my genre, I think I'm noticing the writing more because I'm not used to specific genre tropes maybe. So it's like everything's a little bit more noticeable to me, but having a direct comparison between The Haunting of Hill House and The Death of Mrs. Westaway, like I'm only on page seven. The way this book is already reading feels a little bit longer. Any of the description used in The Haunting of Hill House, I kind of knew that it was going to overall contribute in some way, even if it was done just for like mood enhancement, where I was like, some of these ones, let's see if I can find the specific sentence where I was like, I finally have to pick up the camera. The address was only slightly stained with the grease from house fingers and the mess from the bin. This is after we've had multiple description of like every single movement it feels like, and that might just be Ruth Ware's style and there's nothing wrong with that. It's literally just because I have a direct comparison. I mean, we're talking about she just put the chip in her mouth, she licked the salt off her finger, she sees the bin full of a paper that shouldn't be there. Okay, now she's reaching for the paper. It's just like all of these things. Okay, back to reading. Next page. Or was it? But no, there was no way he would have gone to a solicitor. It is the final day of Spookathon. I have food. A little bit of coffee left and I'm about to get on a live stream with my friend Jessica for our monthly author tube chat and then I'm gonna spend all day freaking reading. This is a great day to end it on. I love that they organized this so that it ends on a Sunday. <laughs> I am freaking gonna finish this book. I only have gotten through one chapter but I'm gonna finish. I have now discovered the great Canadian baking show so <sighs> we're gonna see how this goes. I swear, editing this video back was so funny. <laughs> it is now after Spookathon. And the best thing that this readathon did for me is that I finished a book. Okay, I finished, it was only one, but I finished it. And the crazy thing about that is that recently I made a video where I was talking about like NaNoWriMo and the AuthorTube community and the fact that I was in this giant reading slump. It had been months. I would start a lot of books, but the finishing of them never happened and none of it was the book's fault. It was all me. So the fact that even though multiple times I had like the greatest of intentions to finish all these books, I finished one and since that time it has kickstarted me. Now I'm still in the midst of a whole bunch of other books. I haven't finished any other books, but for The Death of Mrs. Westaway, I am now nearly on page 100 and there's, you know, about 350 pages in this book. Okay, so not quite a third of the way through, but noted. During that time I did make a little marking. I read the introduction for this book, which meant that I know I want to read this book, right? Okay. I am also where am I? on chapter five of Red, White, and Royal Blue. I'm over halfway through the book range. And I am also on page, I don't know that it'll show, 59 of 192 of the book So You've Been Publicly Shamed. Here's the thing, before this past week, I would have, probably I wouldn't have started as many books as I did, <laughs> but I would not have like the confidence that I would finish them. I'm about to leave in a few days for Disney World and I'm confident that I'm going to finish at least half of these books because I know I can finish books. And it's just the feeling of being out of this reading slump is incredible. That's the best thing about this. Reading outside of my genre is always fun and I'm really enjoying it. I do think I'm gonna pick up more thrillers and suspenseful books in the future. So, so that's a win. Oh, it's a win. What the heck? This was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that is going to be it for me. Please do comment down below. Let me know if you participated in Spookathon. How did it go for you? What's a book that's brought you out of a reading slump or are you still in one? Or just generally let me know what you're reading. Obviously, I mean, I have quite the TBR still. <laughs>
So thank you guys so much for watching and I just want to thank everyone who had a hand in organizing the Spookathon and also thank you especially to some of my new patrons this month. Adeline Hernandez, Reliana Nightingale, Amy Suzanne Chafee, Brave Warrior, Claire McLaughlin, and Christina P. And I will see y'all all very soon with a new video. And yeah, happy reading. Bye. Oh, the haunting of Hill House. <sighs> Missed. Nope. <laughs> Is slightly out of my comfort zone. I almost dropped the camera. How do I stop this from recording? Ah! Great. Oh, Frankie, no. <laughs>